Hey Grade Vibes, welcome to our first lockdown lesson for history. Um, I'm very grateful that I've got a voice. I think that the past couple of weeks with no teaching has helped it to get very, very strong. Um, so it's pretty great to be able to teach you through these videos without having to use a microphone. Um, before we get into the content, please know I miss all of you so much. I can't wait to get back to school so I can see you all and we can have lessons like normal and we can have fun in the classroom like we always do. But until then, these videos are going to have to do and I hope that you learn as much as what you do at school through these videos. Before we get going, please make sure that you've got something to write with and something to write on. There's no excuse about not having no pencil cases now because you are at home. So go grab your pencils and your exam pads so that you've got stuff to write with. All right. We are going to be looking at two new groups of people um, this term. So there are three very important groups that we are learning about. The first group we've already learned about, the sand people, hunter-gatherers. So that's all the term one stuff. We, they, we know that they were the first people in South Africa. They lived a really, really long time ago. We know that there's still some that exist in the Kalahari, but for the first group of people that existed in South Africa, it was the sand people. Then uh, we will be learning about the Khoi Khoi, that's today's lesson mostly. And um, another group of people is the African farmers, and that'll come a little bit later on with um, the next virtual lesson. We'll, we'll carry on with that group of people. Um, so we need to distinguish between these three groups of people very carefully. They all have a couple similarities and there's quite a few differences. So try and remember everything we did in term one, that's specific to the sand people. Okay, don't confuse it with the Khoi Khoi and the African farmers. File it in your brain underneath San and don't let the files overlap. Okay, the important thing, um, firstly, is this, the different ages that these uh, groups of people lived in. So the San people and the Khoi Khoi both lived in the later Stone Age. Then the African farmers, much later on in time, lived in the Iron Age. So you can see that when we talk about the first signs of the, the sand people in South Africa, that was about 10,000 years ago, so really, really long ago. And then when the African farmers first came to South Africa, that was 2,000 years ago, so not as long ago. Okay, And then the Khoi Khoi fit in sort of the middle. All right. So the Stone Age is for sand people and Khoi Khoi, Iron Age is for the African farmers, and you'll understand why as we go through our lesson. Okay, we're going to get started looking at the Khoi Khoi in particular though. So, Khoi Khoi, the word means men of men. Okay, we also call the Khoi Khoi herders. All right, it's quite a, an obvious reason they would herd animals. They would have um, herds of cattle and sheep and, and so on. Um, so that's why they were also called herders. So in some of the activities, we might refer to them as just the herders or as koi koi and then in brackets herders or vice versa, you know. So um, these people were just after the sand people. They, they came to South Africa just after the sand people. Um, the Stone Age, the later Stone Age, is the age that they lived in and that meant that they did not have any metal. They didn't know how to mine and how to smelt metal and how to, to make um, metal items yet. So instead of using metal, they would use stone, bone and wood for weapons and tools. All right. So remember, we spoke about this last term with the sand people. Um, we are going to do a mind map. You can see it's quite a big mind map. It's got a lot of information. It's all really important information about the Khoi Khoi. So just like we do in class, in the middle of your page, you're going to do a shape. Remember, I don't really mind what shape you use. Um, you do your shape. You write Khoi Khoi in the middle. And um, you can see I've used a whole lot of colors with my mind map. Remember, I always tell you, the more colors, the easier it is to remember the different sections. So if you can, use a couple of colors to do your mind map. We are going to go through this together quite quickly. I don't want this video to be too long. So just uh, bear with me, write as much as you can. If you need to, once I've gone through all of these points and you ha if you haven't gotten all of them, pause the video, take them all down, and then continue with us once you have got everything um, written down from this mind map. Okay, so we are going to look firstly at their appearance. So like we do in class, you need to have your first little leg of your mind map coming out. Your first heading is appearance, you write it down. And we're going to go through each of these points. 
The Khoi Khoi were bigger than the sand people. They had lighter skin. They were short. Uh, they were. Uh, they had short curly hair. They had thick lips and they had prominent cheekbones. So prominent means that the cheekbones stuck out quite a lot. Okay. Next is the way of life of the Khoi Khoi. So they moved around, but they didn't move around as much as the sand people did. Okay. So they moved around less than the sand. They would move each season. And the reason that they would move is to get water and pasture for their animals. Pasture means um, grazing or grass um, for their animals to eat. Okay. Next is the leader. So each group had a chief. The groups were called clans. So if you want to put clan instead of group there, that's also fine. So the chief was the leader of each of the groups. He would own more animals. And he was more important and wealthier than the other um, people in the clan. So they didn't have money, right? Remember the sand people, they didn't have um, 10 rand, 50 rand, 20 rand notes like we do. They would have um, wealth in the form of animals, okay? Um, we'll discuss that a little bit more later, but that's what it means by them being wealthier. Then how did they live? They would make camps in the shape of a circle. So they would put up their little huts in a, in a circle, and they would have an open in the middle of their huts, an, open, an opening in the middle of their huts for their livestock to sleep in. Okay, livestock is your cattle and your sheep and, and the animals that they had. Then um, they would move their camps whenever they needed new grazing areas. Their huts that they made were very light, they used branches to build a dome sort of frame. And they would put grass mats over the dome, and then that would make a hut. So if I can just draw a quick little picture for you, they would have all these different um, branches going over one another, and then they would wrap a grass um, mat over it, and that would make the, the hut. Okay, so it was dome-shaped. Dome-shaped means it was that sort of shape. Um, when they moved, they would take their mats and branches with them. Okay. So there's already a difference between the sand people and the Khoi Khoi. The sand people didn't really take very much with them, whereas the Khoi Khoi took a little bit more, and we'll talk about why in a moment. Next up, the next heading is food. So they ate game, which is wild animals, wild plant, and milk. Then they would uh, often keep the milk in a clay pot, and then they let it go sour, so it would go off. And um, sour milk is still something that people people drink now um, today, and this was a, a nice delicacy for the Khoi Khoi. They would all enjoy it. The cattle were almost never killed because they were a sign of wealth. Okay, so they would they would try and have as many cattle as they could because that meant that they were more wealthy. They were they were more rich, if you will. Okay, they would kill their cattle on special occasions, and these special occasions were things like weddings or funerals or when a baby was born. Um, so only really special occasions that didn't happen very often would they slaughter an animal. The sheep were sometimes killed for mutton. Okay, mutton is the meat that you get from a sheep. And then, um, like the sand people, the men would hunt and the women would gather the plants. Okay, so there's another similarity. The men would also go and fish sometimes in rivers or the sea, and they would use simple nets to go fishing. Then, what was important to them? I really hope you can see that, but that's what it says. What was important to them? Their herds of animals were really important to them, okay, because it was their sign of wealth. It was like their money. Then, finding good grassland as food for their animals was also important, because to keep their animals healthy and alive meant that they had to have good food, so they would move around just for the animals. Then, they had different types of weapons. Like the sand people, they would use bows and arrows, but their most important weapons were a short spear and a battle axe. They had special fighting oxen, and these were oxen that were um, tamed when they were young, and then their horns were sharpened, and they were trained to storm in on, the en on their enemies. Next up is clothing. So their clothing was made from sheepskin or from wild animal skin. Okay, so another similarity. The wild animal skin is what the sand people would use, um, but the sand people didn't use sheepskin because they didn't keep herds of sheep around. Okay. Next is the objects that they made. So they would make clay pots, they made wooden bowls, they would make jewellery, they made um, 
they would use ostrich eggs to store water, again, same as the San, and they had a reed pipe that they made, which was a musical instrument. And also like the San, they loved to dance. Okay, they would dance quite often. All right, so that's our mind map. If you need to, please pause, take down everything from here. This is really important information for the Koikwe that we'll be using later on as well. So make sure you've got it all, and then we're going to carry on. Right, so this is a little bit more about their way of life. They had what we call a pastoral way of life. Okay, I'm going to read through the information um, coming up on the slide. Um, you don't have to take it all down. Um, it's it's quite uh, easy to remember. So we've got a little activity that we'll do at the end of this. You can always come back to the video, um, go through the information if you've forgotten something, and apply it to the activity a bit later on. So for now, you can just listen and understand and read with me because it is on the screen for you to see. So the Kwekwe were what we call herders or pastoralists. This means that they owned cattle and sheep. They would also move from place to place. The reason why they moved was to find good grazing, which is grass, for their animals as well as fresh water. They would then stay in one, pl one place until the animals had eaten the grass. Once this happened, they would move again. Okay, so if you think about why the sand moved from place to place, Try and consider, is it the same reasons that the Koi Koi moved? Is it for different reasons? And it is a question that I'm asking to a virtual class, so I obviously have to answer myself. They would move for different reasons. The Koi Koi would move because of their animals. The San would move because they either didn't want to use up all the resources in a particular place. They would move to find water. They would go to caves because it was raining. You know, the San had a whole bunch of different reasons that they would move whereas the Koikwe have the one particular reason of them wanting to find good grazing ground for their animals. Okay, like the hunter-gatherers, the San, they would also hunt and gather food when they could and needed to. However, they herded their livestock and also used the livestock for food. Okay, so like we spoke about them um, sometimes using the sheep for mutton, that's the livestock we're talking about here. What kinds of food do you think that they would gather? We're talking about the koi, koi remember? So the koi, koi would gather wild plants um, and um, vegetables and roots and those kinds of things. So also kind of the same as what the sand did, um, but they wouldn't need to do it as often as what the sand did because they had their livestock. The koi, koi lived in much bigger groups in the sand. These groups were called clans, like I mentioned earlier. Sometimes there would be more than 100 people in a clan and clans were led by chiefs. Okay, so we spoke about the sand tribes, and now the Koikwe we know live in clans, and they'd have huge groups of people, which were about 100 people. So how does this compare to the number of people in a sand tribe? If you think about what we did last term, we spoke about the sand tribes being smaller than how many children we had in a classroom. They had about 15 to 20, chil 20 children, 15 to 20 people in their tribe. So there's a huge difference in the number of people that the Koikwe had in their clans and the number of people the San had in their tribes. Moving on, the Koikwe believed in ownership but only of cattle and sheep. If you owned a lot of cattle and sheep you were wealthy and powerful. So like I said earlier, their cattle and sheep, their, their livestock was their form of, of wealth, their, their currency almost. Um, different groups also had rights to water sources in their area. They did not own the water, but they could decide who used it. All right. So um, I think that this is maybe a little bit similar to how the sand people would um, not own the animals, but if they were hunting in a different area that their tribe um, wasn't settled in at that moment, they would ask for permission to have those animals that they'd hunted. Remember, we spoke about that in class. Um, if you don't remember that fully, then We'll, we'll discuss it a little bit later on. Maybe when we get back to school, I can just uh, consolidate that little idea for you. Okay, um, we're going on to the activity now. Um, what I have tried to do is make an online version of this activity. So I will put a link to the online version of this activity in the description. Um, so you can click on that and you can do the online activity. Otherwise, you can copy down this table that we're gonna go through quickly and you can complete it on your own. And then next week, before the new content I give to you, I will put the answers up and you can quickly uh, mark your work and we will go on from there. So the table that we're, we're looking at is a comparison table between the San and the Koi Koi. 
we need to fill in where there are open spaces. So I'll highlight them in case you can't see them too clearly. And um, you should know how to draw a table from, well, from now because we've been doing it for the whole year and years previous. So just draw a table nice and neatly if you're going to do the table version. Otherwise, you can, you can do the um, online version. Um, the first thing we're going to compare between the San and the Khoi Khoi is their way of life. So, the San people were what? And we know the Khoi Khoi were herders. So you need to tell me what the San people were. The size of the groups, there were about so many San people in a group. And in comparison, there were up to however many Khoi Khoi in a group. You need to fill in the answers where I'm underlining, or highlighting rather. Then the ownership of land. The San believed that the land, what? And the Khoikhoi did not believe in the ownership of land, but did have the right to sources of what? Like I said, you can go back to the previous information on your mind map or um, what I've just read through you previously, rerun the video and, and go back to it. Um, next little comparison is movement. The San would move to there are lots of reasons that the sand would move. You need to tell me, try and give me at least three, okay, because there are quite a few. Then the koiko would move each blank. They, that's, that should be they, sorry. Let me quickly fix that for you. They would move to find the best what for their animals. Okay, so you can fill that in. And then the leaders, we're comparing the different leaders that they had. The San believed that everyone was what? And the who was the leader of the clan for the Khoi Khoi. Okay, so go through this quickly, um, take down your table, copy it onto your exam pad that you've got, or you can do the electronic version, and then next week we will go through the answers. Um, that is all that I have got for you today. So I will see you again on Friday, or you will see me, or hear me rather, um, on Friday because we've got uh, life skills. It'll probably be PSW, so just uh, keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome day.